everyone so so wonderful to be here today and connect with you once again i am following up on the video very short 16 second video i made uh last week and i got a lot of requests from you guys for me to expand on that um if you hadn't seen it uh, the video was about it was an answer to a question if modern feminists truly love women so my response to that was modern feminists do not necessarily love care or support other women they unite with them to hate men together so let's talk about this and expand a little bit everybody is welcome to contribute i will address the comments um in a few minutes after i make a few points to once again expand on this topic so welcome everyone uh it's so so wonderful to be here back on the channel uh so let's talk about this thank you elizabeth welcome 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 before i start my dear friends you can find my almost daily life videos on my instagram page which is at veronica underscore olson such as like my name um we talk about different subjects um and if you would like to request a topic or you just would like to uh check it out it may or may not be your cup of tea but you're welcome to check it out uh i do talk there mostly about um feminine things uh, and for fashion but um also subjects such as this one we have today so check it out if you want thank you elizabeth thank you so much let's get started all right so do you really think that modern please note modern feminists are truly passionate about women that they really want to empower empower and hate and help women number one that number one statement that i would like to make there is no true love that is based on hate for someone i'm gonna say this again no true love is ever born based on hate on someone and the things that i had observed here in the united states i'm moving here from eastern europe over a decade ago one thing that really stood out to me is that women would allow themselves to talk very disrespectfully to men to make fun of them, um, being very critical, and really saying embarrassing things in public. But if the man would do the same thing here in, in um, America, in the United States, if men would do that on public, that would be considered uh, disrespectful, he would be a misogynist, he would be a bully, he would be rude. Um, I had absolutely zero appreciation for this and uh, i actually felt very protective uh back in time um of my husband because i felt uh this is ridiculous you should be able if somebody's bullying you or saying unpleasant critical rude things i don't care if you're a man or a woman you should be able to stop them and honestly uh, the russian way or the slavic or the ukrainian way it's you're gonna get back what you just give and more that's how we deal with that it's not okay to do this so once again i do not believe that lower and try to to put somebody down try to make fun of somebody uh, to openly show your disrespect somehow is a great base for love please tell me what you think i would love to hear that in the comments is this really a wonderful base uh for love for uh <laughs> building a community if it's based on hate for somebody um 
that's why personally i do not believe that feminists have modern feminists especially have great intention and that they really uh care about women i do think and i did a I do my observation and I can tell that a lot of it simply based on uniting together with other women to hate men all together. So kind of have this sense of community, which is absolutely um, which is wrong on so many levels absolutely wrong and it's wrong on, on so many levels and um, we're going to talk about this some more in a second. Um, if you respect, if you are disrespectful on this video, such as you ask questions that are not related to the topic, you will be blocked. Try to make a live video and have people sharing things with you that are completely un unrelated. I think, I believe that my subscribers and followers can do better than that. I think sometimes we have people that are following from some different places, but have some, you know, try to use common sense. If you want to request a topic, you can request it later in the comment and I will consider sharing that. It is very annoying and it's not easy to talk when, you know, there are many comments. I don't know how to, um, how to stop them and I do not want to stop them because I would like to see what you guys have to say about this. So, I made my statement, we don't tolerate any disrespect here, and it's a very difficult subject to talk on. So, um, here we are. That's my first point, and I've never experienced love or care as a woman from women who claimed to be feminists and also, uh, you know, have those masculine attributes. I've never felt... Uh, supported, accepted, whatsoever, loved or cared. As women, we can form a beautiful sisterhood, especially, you know, younger women and a little bit more experienced older women. It's always something really powerful uh, being around women that live their life happily and fulfilled. They enjoy things they truly want to enjoy. They learn their lessons and they want to teach younger women how to be wiser, how to be more feminine, how to get more of what they want in life. I've always admired and adored my, uh, you know, wise women mentors. I just, it's almost like you swim in this warmth and wisdom and care, you know. Women have this, whether they have or do not have biological children, but we all have this, you know, motherly uh, energy, like motherly, not only motherly instincts, but this uh, really sweet feminine, you know, sort of uh, like a blanket that we put on, on children or younger women that we want to connect with. So I had experienced that and I'm truly deeply grateful for those fantastic, fabulous women that had impact on my life. And I hope that uh, ladies who are watching my channel, you are looking for some uh, female influence, but only look for female influence from ladies that look like they are living truly a happy and fulfilled life. It doesn't mean that they don't have, um, they, they've never had issues or experienced turbulence, but they seem to always find a way. They seem to always be warm and friendly. And no matter how old they are, their eyes are shining like a diamond. It's kind of like Betty White, you know, no matter what decade you catch her at, her eyes are shining like a diamond. This is kind of women we need. Unlike, um, the feminist that embody that uh, masculinity and sense of I'm going to compete, I'm going to win, I'm going to do everything myself, I don't need nobody. Uh, I don't think that anybody uh, around these ladies can feel any kind of true compassion or warmth or comfort. Um, I've never made friends with women who are that extremely uh, radical feminists because it's very unpleasant 
experience. Um, it's weird. <laughs> It's, it really is. I remember my first interaction when um, I just I I moved from Ukraine to United States, um, and uh, I got married back in back in time over a decade ago. Some of you know my story. Some of you don't. Um, but I want to share with you a few few highlights, so to speak. So we went out uh, to meet friends. You know, you want to get out and uh, meet friends, meet people and socialize. And my first experience was really very strange. I could not understand why women would be uh, so gray. You know, gray. I don't know if it's if it doesn't make any sense, but they literally were, like, they were literally having this vibe of no, they had no person, not, like, no, I don't even, they felt, they really have, gives it masculine, very manly, so to speak, vibe. So, there was nothing about them that would tell them that they are women. Not in their behavior, not in their manners, not in the way they looked. And it was awkward. I was just so, so puzzled by that. Um, and that definitely did not uh, give the supporting vibe, you know, that as feminists claim that they are for empowerment, they are for supporting and love for women. Well, there was no love, there was no support, there was only conversation behind my back on, uh, criticizing, um, the uh, the way I look, and I'm sure ladies get it all the time. If you're a feminine woman, if you take pride in your looks, if you have feminine appearance, if you take care of yourself, as soon as you turn your head, uh, these women, I don't know, I mean, this, I don't know, I really don't know how to call them, I don't want to be disrespectful, but I just don't know how to call this. They would, as soon as you turn around, they're going to be a conversation. Oh, oh, look, look, she's trying to get a man. Well, you know, usually you already have a man and more men to be willing to be your man, you know, just so they could take a note of that. Uh, but regardless, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, she's dressing like this because she's trying to get a man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason. It's okay that it's a natural part of femininity and actually feminine sexuality to express uh, themselves or to, ex to or express itself through feminine attributes, you know, such as, you know, make a pair, clothes, uh, taking care of your body, taking care of, the, of um, being careful how you treat others and all of this. Never mind. Yes, only. So we walk around all day, uh, looking scary and then when men is around oops you know let's all get dressed immediately you can't change your attitude you can't change the way you look at the world and the way you treat people just because uh, you know oh there is a man around you know let's just I think that is wrong <laughs> Of course, we all get uh, excited and inspired when there is somebody that we like. It does give us extra inspiration and motivation. But if feminists did not know, it's a natural feminine desire to beautify everything, including themselves. That's just how we do it. That is just how we do it. And once again, femininity and taking care of your appearance and being creative and adding different colors and, and uh, creating your image, you know, kind of recreating yourself every day, it's a, it's, it is a very uh, satisfying process. It's a very inspiring thing uh, that many feminine women have as their daily tool. We love doing this. We love uh, being creative. And some women say, oh, you just feel insecure without makeup. Or you you just have um, something else. It's, it's like... Really? Oh, really? Maybe it's you who gave up on life and you think that rolling out of bed... Uh, and going around like this is okay. I think, and feminine women, most of them, I think would agree, 
that it's simply rude for a lady to roll out of bed, put some um, wrinkly clothes on, and go around town. I think that is really rude and disrespectful. Because it is. When you take care of yourself, you show respect to you and to people that you are going to meet. And it's not only the appearance, it's also your attitude and the way you treat people. So, by the way, taking care of yourself do not always necessarily mean the amount of, uh, to extent that you decide to take as a woman. Some ladies look wonderful with just, you know, fresh, uh, you know, styled hair with a hot brush and a lip gloss. It's about your attitude and knowing what's working for you, that you feel good about yourself. I just could not believe the amount of of bullying if you look nice and, and rolled, rolled eyes and like, it's just, simply a uh, simple case of really weird jealousy when instead of if you feel jealous that this woman get attention or she creates this nice vibe about her an atmosphere that people are just drawn to her create this yourself no reason to be mad absolutely no reason to be mad and if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. But there is no reason to criticize it and make women to feel ashamed of themselves. Um, I have some friends in our Slavic community here that told me, you know, we really feel uncomfortable when we dress up and go in places sometimes, just, you know, doing errands, running errands, you know, looking good, because there is always that person that would ask, oh, so what is it you have today? Why are you so overdressed? Or you don't need to do all that. Oh, you're doing all this, all this lipstick, you know, why? And to not draw attention, sometimes ladies are st uh, starting to quit and not really do this anymore. And for those, um, for those people who do not understand, I'm gonna say this once again, the way as women it give us power and joy to recreate ourselves every morning to put some love this is how we express our love to ourselves to the world it's our creativity it's fun if anything it's fun if you were born as a woman you you're going to face some challenges you're going to face some pain every month you're probably going to face some childbirth pain you're going to face some emotions you're gonna face some hard things so why not to face the fun as well why not to enjoy yourself fully why not to be creative why not to inspire others with your with the way you show up to this world you know why feminist women do not do it because they are simply lazy they are extremely lazy and they think they put all this energy to prove that they are better than other people and then they are better than men where they will never be better than men the the way men are you know it's like you can try to be a man but you never will be you will spend all this energy and you prove nothing to nobody and one thing that they also do not know is that when you step in your femininity you actually save a lot of energy and you get a lot of beautiful unexpected benefits because men are happy to save you the energy you don't need to spend they are happy to carry your bag they're happy to open your door they're happy to let you first in line they, they are happy to do these things and it's a win-win situation so you can save your energy by doing what's natural to you and enjoy the benefits of it but feminists do not know that 
They think that women are are suppressed. <laughs> Um, no, honey, we are not suppressed. If anything, um, when you know what you're doing, men are willing and happy to support you, to work for you, and uh, to dedicate achievements they do in life for you, and um, to treat you like a lady. So we're not losing anything. And I did mention this before in this video. This is a natural desire. Women through uh, thousands and thousands of years will always look how to beautify themselves. It's an instinct. Just as men trying to um, become stronger and do certain things, we always look for things to become cozier, more beautiful. It's just our expression of our femininity and our appearance is also expression of our sexuality because the woman that takes extra care of herself and she takes extra creativity this is the way that she expresses her feminine self it means that she simply has extra energy which also part of extra um extra um, Losing. I'm losing it. Oh my gosh. I would not say that it doesn't come natural, but it's it just it just a, a um, expression. Yes, I found it. Sorry, guys. It's a little bit late as usually. It's a self-expression of uh, women who are in connection with their femininity and sexuality is part of it. The woman that is does not have any um, emotions, she doesn't have any creativity, she is always tired, she runs around with men, she's trying to compete with men. Uh, very soon she will be burnt out and she will have no uh, that of that extra energy left. She will have none of that left, so you will see her gray. In, she will be gray, wearing gray clothes, be, being a gray person. I don't know why, it just it associates with me with just color gray. So she does not have anything to give to people in her life, to men in her life, to her children, because she works so hard against her nature. She runs so hard. She develops so much of stress hormone uh, called cortisol and others that her femininity, the stress take over and her femininity just dissolves um, and disappears. So that's why these women, they are not really very sensual. They don't really care about that side of life and they are not very seductive or attractive because that consistent run and being this masculine leading role takes away that energy that should have been used for other things that fulfill and nourish and nurture women. Just a side note. I can't believe I got completely lost on extra, but I hope you guys understand that it's not always easy to define this very simple but yet somewhat complex uh, thoughts. <laughs> so thank you so much for the kind words. I'm going to read a few of your messages and then I continue with a few more things. Thank you uh, for, for the comment. Somebody says that you are too pretty for America. Being pretty like that causes more problems. Well, you know, the woman needs to know not only how to be beautiful and attractive, but she also know she needs to know how to use it. So with learning things and being around uh, people, you just you just learn how to step into your power. I appreciate your compliment, but um, I think every woman that's through her feminine journey needs to learn it is very important how to deal uh with the outer world and of people who are um 
completely out of alignment. <laughs> so it's one of the very, very important things to know how to manage your yourself. So to not, because somebody who is very vulnerable and very, uh, you know, sweet, uh, just good natured and open can easily become a target. Uh, so that would be something that experienced women uh, should, wise women should share with younger women rather than teaching them how to compete with men. They should teach them how we complementing each other with men and how we can get the most and lose the least as women. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment, though. The families, the, the families get so bad here that you move to South Korea? Hey! Gotta do what you gotta do. You gotta be where you appreciate it. Thanks, Aaron. Good to see you. <laughs> he says, tell like it is. <laughs> yes, I always do. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm dropping some... in. It's not even information. You know, information is something you open Google or Wikipedia. I'm sharing with you guys some perspectives, some thoughts. And uh, it's not mathematics. So... People can have different outlooks. I'm just sharing something that uh, I believe could be useful. And something the way I feel it. You may feel it completely different. So you are more than welcome to share your thoughts. Um... Yes, Erin is saying, it's extremely nice to see a woman with a big letter W. Thank you for, for that, Erin. That is vibrant and alive. Some people have just given up on being beautiful. Yes. You know, in in United States, a lot of feminists, they give this advice to women. And this is, once again, that I do not believe that feminists really care about women. Because they give that advice, you know, run, 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 chase, 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 get more money, get more of this, get more of that. They forget that as women, we get fulfilled being feminine. You can run a company and be feminine. You can run a business and be feminine. But they teach competition. They teach this very unhealthy way of living, very masculine, that give women nothing but, but a burnout. That they lose their beauty. They lose their playfulness. They lose their femininity. They lose their touch with themselves. I, as most of ladies, sometimes we live through times in life when you have to step up uh, in a masculine way, when you have to uh, go out there and do difficult things. You know, life is a, life is a real uh, challenge sometimes, and it's trying us. But the problem is that if feminists truly loved women, they would talk about these things. They would explain how to do it in more harmonious way, how to still have some feminine time and interaction, even if you have three jobs because you need to support your family. Mm, even if, you know, your husband lost a job and you need to, to step up and be a team. But the only thing they teach is, is uh, competition. Compete, compete, compete. We do not compete with men. We were meant to complement each other and not compete and tear each other apart. If we were the same, we would be built the same. We would have, we would look the same as men. Our bodies would be the same. But our bodies and the way we think and our hormones are polar. We have polarity. Even when feminists claim that we are absolutely the same, we were meant to be the same thing, they can try to do it, but they cannot deny it. We have absolutely different nature. We have absolutely different hormonal cycles. And that's why women who step into masculine, they are most of the time miserable. They're not going to tell you this. But sometimes after years, they, they run away, they run away from things. 
from their true desire they try to follow what society wants but then they have a day when they wake up and they realize that they basically feel that they wasted their life because they have all the outer success but they don't feel happy or fulfilled inside and it's not a good feeling as women we grow um very important part of growth for us is growing in a relationship we evolve and we learn and we truly learn how to open our heart and evolve as as human beings in the close relationships with other people that includes family friends children uh, you know marriage and other relationships we really learn and evolve when we learn how to love when we you know many of us uh, become mothers we really learn what love really is and we really learn what compassion really is we, we learn we learn through our heart more than we learn through our brain actually heart has a brain because those instinct that intuition those strong calling that we have as women they are very important to listen to unlike feminists suggest that we deny everything that is natural for us and go and spend best years of our life proving something to somebody and don't get me wrong women are capable more than capable of leading and doing things and create companies and businesses and being teachers and being doctors and being lawyers but it does not mean it doesn't mean that we switch completely into or we switch our out our, ourselves in this mode of like almost being a psychopath or, or sociopath, most of no empathy, no love, only career, money, career, that is unnatural for a woman. Even the most driven women uh, still were born to be nurturing to someone. Not all women were meant to be mothers. Not all women were meant to uh, be wives even. But that nurturing factor that instinct is always there and that complete uh disconnection between your heart and yourself that been taught to women for so long is really uh, is really unfortunate how nobody uh inspires women to look deeply into the things they were meant to be doing you know, Betty White did not have any children, but she was feminine and and fun and nurturing to everybody. She loved animals. She made the whole country her children and grandchildren through through the joy she brought to everybody. So you can be very successful. You can do all these things and still be a woman with a big letter W. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. Um, thank you. We trust God that God knew what he was doing by creating male and female. Yes. And polarity is one of them. Yes. One of the reasons we are absolutely polar. We can't create, you know, if, if you think about on biological level, um, same sex same gender cannot create a new life for a reason there is a reason for it so being complementary that was the purpose that we complement each other and that makes it a strong unit but once again not all women are meant to have all of this you know sometimes you know we know in betty white case for example she was she i think her third marriage so she had two divorces by the way so her third marriage she finally married the man that she truly loved she shared everywhere how much she loved him and and it was mutual they had i think like 17 years of very happy marriage and she he was the one for her he actually died in 81 and she never wanted to get married again. She just knew that there was, you know, like in that song, 
Nothing Compares to You. Beautiful song by Shined. I'm not saying her name correctly. O'Connor. I love that song so much. She knew that nothing will compare to him. And she... Love was important to her. She actually mentioned that she never... Uh, could never imagine life without love. And she, she was a career woman. She put her love into career but she really did put her love not just you know competition and 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 putting somebody down to elevate herself she you know everybody knows she was crazy about animals she was a huge animal lover but she also gave love to everybody that came in contact with her or watched her on the television she she really was such and is still such a great asset to to everyone she Mentioned in that interview that one thing she could never imagine her life without is without love. And she found a way to give it in non-traditional way, in a way, because, you know, she never became a mother or a wife again after 1981. But she has expressed her love through other things. So it is, we're living in a great time where, and I think it's truly feminism at first the first and maybe second wave was needed for women just to get their rights so they can be you know fully in the terms of law doing things that they need to be doing right now we have a situation where in only in the united states and other western countries women are fighting for the rights that they already have it's absolutely ridiculous and they make it other ways they make it so exaggerated and weird and we live in a time of choice so i don't understand some women are more creative some women born artists some women born genius some women born something else so you can choose what you want it doesn't mean that oh you have to have a child or you have to get married you don't have to but you do not have to tell people that you want to unite with them and genuinely support them when the only reason you uniting with them because you cannot stand men or you have resentment toward men if you have resentment toward men you need to go and take some therapy sessions and not try to uh hurt other young women that are considering to create a family and um enjoy their femininity create the most of their life the major problem to me with with feminists right now is that they teaching young women the wrong things and uh you know younger people are always gullible they look at trends they look at society they think oh you know maybe i i should be uh i shouldn't be doing all these things maybe i should be uh copying these women but before you copy somebody or follow somebody examples look how happy they are regardless of their circumstance are they really like if you look at betty white and you see her sparkling eyes once again so that she um had through the centuries through the centuries which feels like but through decades you can tell that she really lived her message she really loved no matter what was happening in her life and this is what feminists do not teach you. They only they teach you not to love or care about anybody else, but just going uh, pretty much like a psychopath, not care about other people. Especially if it comes to men. And I keep saying I keep seeing these t-shirts saying cats not kids and uh, some other terrible things. And it's just like Hmm. Some therapy required. Whew. Well, there are probably going to be more videos on this because this topic is so, is so big and wide. Seriously, there is so much to, to unpack here. So this is going to be my video number one on this topic. <laughs> Let me read some of your comments. Hey, Michael. Yes, Betty White is a great example for sure. I know. Uh, Petra is saying, I heard a good quote. Chivalry isn't dead. 
it went where ladylike disappeared too. Exactly. And the thing is, even despite of the crazy times we are living to, men still want to be sh chivalrous. And I can tell you that um, even despite of uh, certain things and movements, when you go outside in the real world and you deal with people and you meet people, I mean, men still remain men. So as ladies, the best we can do is, you know, remain feminine and appreciate. I always make sure, you know, when I go to the store, I still have the door open for me or... Um, when I'm sometimes, you know, uh, getting gas or doing anything, men always step up and help. So I always make sure to say a very loud and, uh, you know, polite thank you to make sure and to encourage men to be doing these things. Because feminists are offended when somebody opens a door for them or carries a happy bag. I think it's a, like, special kind of mental illness, but... That's for another video. So, ladies, if you're watching me, always make sure you, you smile and be very polite when, when men step up and help you with something because a lot of them are afraid to do it anymore. They do not want to get, uh, you know, a har harassment notice of sorts, right? Or that uh, some misunderstanding. So these are all of the reasons why I do not believe for one second that feminists are truly and deeply supportive and caring about women. They give women horrible guidance, horrible advice, horrible example, and a true path to misery. Just a true path to misery. You want to be miserable? Follow me. You know, we are not always in control of the circumstances and things that happen, you know? Some some women are not that lucky in love. And sometimes somebody you truly love passes away. And sometimes you were not you want to have children, but you are not capable of doing that. It doesn't mean that you are not, you cannot enjoy uh being a woman and be feminine, just as example I just named. But in the case of radical feminism, they really try to ingrain uh, that masculine energy competing for women, that women need to compete with men, and that <clears throat> they try to like embed that hate for men, always criticizing, always uh, this always ongoing joke of emasculation. Uh, I can't stand that, cannot stand. Um, and... Um, just kind of giving young women this message that men are root of all evil. Only because they were misguided and things did not work out for them. Anybody who gives miserable advice and always, you know, like that, it only means one thing, that things did not work out for them. And they just think that it's a, the best way in the world to teach this. So things do not work out for others. You know, sometimes I, uh, you know, get around, uh, you know, school and kids and, you know, young adults. And it's just so sad to see what I see. Really, it's so sad to see. Girls talk like boys, dress like boys, behave like boys. Even worse. Because they know they can get away. If you're in school, in a public school, for example, you can... Uh, say offensive things to boys, you can make fun of boys, and you're not going to get in trouble. We're not even going to touch on universities in this video. I'm talking about public school. You're not going to get in trouble, but if a boy says something, um, you know, he's going to get in a lot of trouble. And I just think it's, it's absolutely wrong. Um, it's, so, like my my favorite phrase it's so wrong on so many levels and uh i truly hope that women uh who has wisdom and life experience and love for other women and young women and girls will step up and encourage that self love and uh femininity in young women because when you have self love um, I'm going to say how it is, 
once again if you have have self-love you're not gonna be tormenting your body with piercings and tattoos you're not gonna let yourself go to hundreds of pounds you're not gonna color your hair green you're not gonna wearing uh extremely crazy dark makeup you're not gonna be the opposite of what you were supposed to be literally right now you're almost a rebel you know if you don't have gr uh, green hair if you're not 250 pounds if you don't have tattoos and piercings you are literally a rebel if you have some some classic conservative values and you do not sleep around you do not let people mistreat you if you have um if you have class and elegance you literally stand out like a sore thumb think about this how far things went so ladies it's our responsibility to teach things to young women and young girls and not only you know i would say girls of all ages but especially those that are coming up and they see this mess you you guys already know my things on on women's empowerment it's really crazy that women uh, that, that that feminists think that um women are powerful but that but then again they need government intervention to succeed I'm going to say this again. So feminists claim that women are powerful, but then they also claim that we are helpless and we almost need government intervention to succeed. We need movements. We can literally give life. It doesn't get any more powerful than that. I wish somebody would wake these women up. There is, it doesn't get any more of anything. <laughs> we don't need no empowerment. It's just, you know, each, each time I hear is that I'm just like, I, I'm, just, I'm lost for words. Oh, I need water, tea, vodka, something. Help me, God. I need something. <laughs> yeah oh my gosh don't even bring the subject of raising better males everywhere oh my god i i sometimes i'll be honest with you guys i scream sometimes when i encounter this complete encouraging of uh you know beta beta male behavior and i myself um uh you know run into beta behavior i scream like i don't i don't always scream i scream inside of me i don't actually scream unless i'm at home i i, I tell you honestly when i'm at home i do sometimes make this uh, sound because it's unbelievable uh you know the feminist women that raise this man who are grown men now young men but grown well actually not young and like middle-aged men some oh and they step into the beta behavior oh my goodness oh that's a whole different video beta male it's the saddest thing to see it's literally you know beta male empowerment in all these public schools and all these mainstream liberal movements it's insanity my dear friends men do not need to ask for permission to exist <sighs> but don't get me there because it will be a five-hour life and i'll see you all in the morning <laughs> with a raccoon eyes yeah they do bobby for sure yes i need vodka i really do but i'm a lady so i'm gonna drink my tea mm. we have mass production of beta male because of the feminist liberal crazy mentality um michael ray saying also beta beta men don't want masculinity so they don't they want us to come down to their level that's the only way they can succeed yes i agree with that 
Yes, and they unite with feminists and they have no idea what the heck they are doing. Young women want chivalry, but they still arbor this radical feminism. Exactly, that is so contradictory. Yes, so young women, let's say, you know, women in their early 20s, they look at their grandmas and they think, you know, how come, you know, my grandma is, you know, uh, you know, had a good family and she was treated well and she was, it was romance and, well, it's because she was a traditional woman, at least to, for the most part, because she respected her, she respected men in general and she respected her husband, so she got the benefits, so she got treated like this. And it's absolutely is insane that some women are being radical feminists and then they want their men to, to make money and give it to them. And they want to have romantic gifts and other things. Well, I don't think men are making a lot of romantic gifts and contributions and uh, they inspired to do these things to women that disrespect them openly belittle and emasculate them all the time if you want to know how those women in earlier generations got their men to well got their men quote unquote to do all of these things ask them and see what kind of behaviors they embodied you know how did they um show up how did they present themselves oh. so i think that's good enough for part one my dear friends we are coming to an hour so i'm gonna read a few more comments and we're gonna call it a night probably won't go for five hours Elizabeth says, we don't mind a five-hour life. <laughs> I am a lady with vodka. Okay, okay, well, you know, maybe one day when I'm someplace beautiful and we have, like, some kind of seminar, that would be fun. Hmm, thank you. Thanks, Bill. I am. <laughs> No better covert than the front line in the war. Exactly. That's a whole another... I'm going to make a video on equality in particular. And we're going to talk about war. We're going to talk about operating garbage truck. And doing all the things that men do that women do not fight for. They want to be equal. They, they can do everything that men can do. But have not seen a woman to fight to be in construction or doing the trash um, being... Uh, in the garbage service or being volunteering uh, that taking part in military duties would would be um, mandatory you know I haven't seen women fighting for that but that's whole another video yeah and the things that are going on in Ukraine and Russia it's also whole another video let's just more or less stay on the topic It's really easy to just be all over the place. Michael says, uh, there was no traditional woman in my life. Only my grandmother, my mom, my sister, and my ex-wife were radical feminists. They destroyed my father. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Yes, I know what you mean. And I hope that you guys will not learn how to, you know you know, hate women and you have to feel sense of understanding it and uh, choose what's best for you. But understand that most of these women were completely misled, just like, you know, MGTOW movement misleading men right now and setting them up for, in the end, an empty life without meaningful relationships and families and children. Uh, just like that, feminists misled women in a major way and this is why i do not believe for a second once again that radical feminists mean anything good for women uh because they teaching them things that will hurt them and in the long run uh 
the entire life may go to waste because you know life is about is about people is about connections and meaningful things you guys know i love beautiful things some of you follow me on uh, ig i uh admire aesthetics and i love beauty and i like uh you know my first of course but in the end of in the end of the day by in the we know when, when you get older when you in the in the last you know quarter or you know last years of your life those are not the things you'll be thinking about you'll be thinking about people and moments you share with them so we'll we teach our daughters and sons how to enjoy material things, enjoy aesthetics, enjoy beautiful things, you know, enjoy making money, but love people. In families and MGTOW, they, they replace love and relationship with things, with belongings. They teach people how to use people and love their belongings. When in reality, we need to love people and use, enjoy our material things and belongings. So it's completely screwed up, to say the least. <clears throat> but that's why it is so, so important to find people who inspire you and kind of do, um, take things with, uh, with a grain of salt. In case of feminists, take things with a pound of salt and some on top. Thank you. Yes, this is my IG. It's it's uh, Veronica underscore Olson. You can join it if you like pr pretty things in my talks, or you can stay here on YouTube if that's not your cup of tea. You can also join my Patreon if you want to support the things I do. It's always much, much appreciated. By the way, for my Patreon members, I'm going to drop uh, Tanya's personal stories this weekend uh, for you to watch. We decided to keep it private for a number of reasons, but uh, if you're on my Patreon, you can watch also the other side with her story. So thank you guys, everybody who supports and, and my uh, um, channel members, I just want to also let you know that I appreciate you very much. Uh, don't think that it goes unnoticed. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It means a lot. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. It's my pleasure and my... Uh, true joy to be here and be able to share things it's really wonderful to be able if you think about it you know you can have a conversation and people join in from all over the world um you know it's truly is wonderful if you have a question is that is irrelevant to this topic uh write it under this live show once it's over so i'll see maybe i'll respond to it in my next video Yes, I I know, Michael. I saw you on IG and you shared a little bit of your story. It was really powerful. And I'm really glad that you, quote unquote, woke up from that madness and you can do a lot better now. I remember your comment. I know exactly who you are. So um, I appreciate you being on both of my platforms. My grandma had jewelry and loved her dresses. Yes. You know, feminists almost make women ashamed for you know for dressing up for beautifying themselves and um women were meant to be ador adored and admired and men were meant to be respected before even they are loved they were meant to be respected there is no shame in women accepting compliments and gifts and uh all kinds of things and feeling adored. There is nothing wrong with that. 
it's an absolute need and the, the reason why feminists are so mad is because there is nobody to adore them you know nobody gonna adore somebody who looks like a man you know walks like a man talks like a man i mean that'd be weird and most of all being uh disrespectful and making fun and emasculating men no man who made fun of is gonna come and adore you or be be moved to do things for you also i think subconsciously they know that feminine women have a lot of power we don't need to sweat and um we can uh to achieve certain things we can just move our eyebrow eyebrow and things will be done we don't have to scream and yell and prove something we can just have silence and uh, show our dissatisfaction and things would be done the way we need them to be done. We save a lot of energy. Yeah, we put, we put effort and creativity in ourselves, but we save a lot of energy in achieving things because we are not expected to have it the, to uh, get love and approval with how much heavy stuff we had carried today. You know, door gets opened, uh, dinner sometimes get served when we are out. Things just uh, really unfold for us because we are not in denial of ourselves. We can step in our masculine, we all have masculine and feminine. We step in our masculine like you wouldn't believe when we need to. You know, everybody knows about mama bear. Or, you know, mom, mama tigress or, you know, mama lioness. She will tear you apart. But that's not the state we are living in. You know? You know, my mom was very ambitious. She, I think in some ways, maybe we are alike because, uh, and I met a lot of women who are very ambitious, very driven in Ukraine very much into education very much into even you know career growth but their first calling and priority is always people and family that's why women should not be forced to leave their child sick in a daycare and go and work for somebody because we can have our our desire to achieve things and and uh, you know shine in a professional way, but it cannot go over the instinct of nurturing. It's just it's against our nature. It's the same if you're with a man and he can't protect you. If if you walking on the street and uh, you have a man who uh, when you approach somebody approach you with a gun or somebody trying to hurt you if this man runs away if he's scared that he's weak um you will never ever want to see him again even if you survive that it's over because that is very basic uh but major things that we expect uh from each other If the man is out there, you know, to protect you physically, you know, to catch the bullet, to catch that knife, to, to do all these things, um, you can probably be loyal and respectful to him in return. I think it's not going to kill anybody. And uh, feminine women know a lot of secrets. N not even secrets. I would say they, they have true, true wisdom. And that's why everybody wants to be in their presence. Young, old, middle, everybody wants to be in their presence. You know, I was very lucky to be in the presence of very uh, wise and um, powerful women. You know, they were not competing with men on their power. They were making men's power work for them. <laughs> it's like an employee and the boss. You know? So feminine women know how to almost, uh, you know, be a boss in that comparison because they enjoy the outcome of men's labor. But men are happy to create that for them. 
in the simple return of, you know, respect and affection. I'm just saying. Michael Ray says, oh, I've caught a knife before. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, but looks like you obviously survived. I had men protecting me in my life too and risking their life. Even men I don't know. Of course, uh, it was not an experience I wanted to happen, but that's why I'm so um, adamant about these things. Michael says, I've seen some mama bears. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing my information. Michael says, I come from Native American background, so I know a lot about tradition. My people are brainwashed now with woke revolution. Only the true people don't follow these days. Hard to find them, though. Well, you can find them on my channel. I hope, I hope that we will grow. So, talking about gross, gross in general, please share my channel and my videos with those people who are feel like minority, but I don't really think we are a minority. I think that we are silent majority. We should be a lot less silent too. So, yes, I want this to be a place where people with common sense meet. All right. Um, Petra is saying, who built out most of our cities, roads, and infrastructure? Men. Yes, it's very true. You know, they built all of that. And I don't, nobody wants to compete with that. We built them. We created them, we brought them into this world, we nurtured them, we got um, our pains and hurts, and, and uh, some women did not survive giving birth. So do not talk about terrible things about women because women is the beginning of life, and a lot of women had sacrificed their life to give life, especially back in time. So that is a compliment. That's why we are complimentary. We do incredible things. For each other and we should keep it this way yes that's exactly that that's exactly the attitude michael say, says i don't hate feminists i just leave them alone very easy to avoid exactly Sometimes they hide their beliefs, so, so we have to be careful, especially as father. Yes, very true. I also think that, you know, creating the movements to hate feminism is not going to help, you know, everlasting love in the world. So ignoring that completely and living life according to your beliefs and creating some positive things, uh, I believe is the way to go. So I totally agree with that. So, my dear friends, we are already over an hour. Let's not do too much longer because I need to get my family in sleep and rest. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And uh, please share your thoughts. Don't forget to put thumbs up. And, of course, thank you. Thank you so much. I would appreciate everybody who shares my uh, videos maybe on your page or, uh, you know, in some messages because it would be nice to grow and uh, spread the message. I would highly appreciate that. You can even send me a screenshot if you decide to share my videos and do something like this. You don't have to, but you can if you'd like. I've already seen a few people sharing my IG videos. So my short videos, don't be scared when you will see like 16 seconds, uh, 30 seconds videos. It doesn't mean that there will be no lives. There will be lives. There are going to be some pre-recorded videos and other things. But... Um, we need some help to grow, so I appreciate if you could do that.
And if you have some thoughts that if I haven't read your message, if you have some thoughts, if you have a request for next topic or something like that, put them in a in a permanent section of comments below under the video. That would be great. And thank you, Elizabeth. That's really sweet of you. Also, so you guys can find me again. You can send me a message on IG at Veronica Olson. You can send me an email. I'll post it below. And also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can become a member here. Uh, push the join button and become a monthly contributor if you really enjoy this content. Or you can join me on Patreon and... Uh, for more personal posts and those posts that are not saved on youtube but will be saved on patreon so thank you so very much this only was a part one there is really so much to unpack on unpack on this topic but i hope that you enjoyed it and uh, i hope to see you very soon again thank you so much petra it's wonderful to have you here thank you <laughs> petra says that was great so satisfying thank you I would love your input as well. You know, maybe, I don't know if you are open to this. Maybe you can uh, jump on sometimes uh, and share your perspective because things that you shared with me were quite amazing about you and uh, your daughter and uh, what's going on in universities and colleges. That's a whole another topic. So with that being said, my dear friends, um, I'm always open to your opinions. So again, feel free to comment below to share the video. Have a wonderful, relaxing night and I will see you very soon. Thank you.